right. All right. Well, thank you, Marissa, and the whole Triad team for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to be in front of people and give uh, to any information that I can. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been a physical therapist for 30 more than that some odd years. I hate to say that out loud anymore. Um, and, and really one of the passions that I have and uh, that Joint Pro has is to give back to the community. So we do like to give these sort of, uh, uh, make ourselves available to answer questions that you have, you know, try to educate people in the community so that we're all a little bit safer and a little bit more comfortable getting around. So today I've been asked to talk about falling. It's a great topic, right? Um, so falling, but more important than that is getting up, yeah. all right? Uh, <laughs> so I, I do this pretty informally. Um, so although your questions were, are going to be answered at the end, if you have some burning thing and you want me to talk about it, I'm more than happy to talk about it after we're finished. So this is your chance to ask a therapist. I want to introduce you to Amanda Mitchell. She's also one of the therapists that works at Joint Pro. Um, so we have a fantastic team there, and she's here to answer whatever questions you have as well. All right, so I'm going to be looking at my slide a little bit. So this is where we're located. We're right down the street. We're a very small private practice, so we're here for you. Um, very different than a big corporate clinic. We d believe that people deserve more individualized attention, more one-on-one -on -one care, more manual therapy. We sort of, uh, as everybody walks in the door, our slogan basically is we treat you like a member of the family, and we really do. Um, we care about you, we want to make sure that you're safe and comfortable, and that's one of the reasons why we're here. Um, but as far as what, you're gonna, what we're going to learn today is what is a fall, okay? I think we're all pretty familiar with falling and the fear of falling, um, but what are some of the risk factors? Some of them you can change, some of them you cannot, but let's talk about those and figure out what things we can maybe do to decrease your risk of falling. How to protect yourself if you start to fall. Um, most importantly, how to get up if you fall, and then how to help somebody else. You know, oftentimes we're walking with someone. You know, maybe one of you is not steady. Maybe neither one of you are steady. Um, so we'll we'll kind of talk about that scenario as well. All right. So what is a fall? Anybody? What is a fall? Yeah. Well, I think what most people think about a fall is they think about when they land on the ground, okay? So oftentimes we ask people in physical therapy, like, have you fallen in the last year? You know, that's just one of our standard questions. Um, you can come up, come up. It's not like church, you can come up, I swear. <laughs> um, but technically, if you read along with me, a fall is any event that leads to an unplanned, unexpected contact with the supporting surface. So what that means is, when you go to get up from the couch, say, me, say maybe you're on a low couch or something like that, and you go to push yourself up and you do one of these and you flop back down, technically that's a fall, okay? It doesn't have to land you on the ground, but that's the fall that we all think of. Um, so just be kind of conscious of that. If you've had any of those episodes where you feel like Ooh, I, you know, and you catch yourself or you're walking around and now you're grabbing for furniture or walls or whatever, technically that's a fall, okay? So we want to actually be aware of when those things start happening and how you can prevent that from escalating to where you are on the ground, okay? So think about just any unsteadiness on your feet, really. Okay, so risk factors for falling. One of the things that we talk about in physical therapy a lot is strengthening, okay? That's why the New Lenox has that fantastic matter of balance classes where you learn exercises, their fit and strong classes. Those are all free resources that I hope you guys are taking advantage of. They're available for anyone in the New Lenox area. Um, but one of the biggest things you can do to decrease your risk factor for falling is strengthen. So strengthen your legs, and I'm gonna actually go farther than that and say strengthen your arms as well. Because, and we'll get to that, because your arms are going to be really important if you should find yourself on the floor, you're going to need some upper body strength to help you get up from the floor, okay? So any exercises that you can do, any sort of push-up things in your chair, you know, pushing up in your chair, things like that, those are going to be real important for strengthening your arms to help you get yourself up from the floor if you should find yourself on the ground, okay? 
Um, leg strengthening is hugely important. So all those exercises that you know, you've been told to do probably sometime in the past, little mini squats standing at your kitchen counter, all those sort of things, leg extensions where you're straightening and bending your knees, all those sort of things, sidestepping, hip strengthening. Hip strengthening is one of the most important things that people forget about. They, they, like people are nodding their heads and I see you following along with it. Yeah, sure, I get that if you're gonna do a little mini squat that's gonna strengthen your legs. One of the more important, other important things is the strength on the outside of your hips. So you need to strengthen the outside of your hips as well so that you're not wobbling this way and you don't lose your center of gravity. Thank you. Um, so vitamin D deficiency, that's another thing. There's been a lot of studies that have linked vitamin D deficiency to imbalances in dizziness and unsteadiness of gait and just puts you at an increased risk for falling. So it's not something you need to run to your doctor tomorrow to ask about, but next time you're at the doctor, make sure they're checking your vitamin D levels and make sure your vitamin D levels are where they should be because that's something you can change easily. Um, Poor balance, okay? Obviously, poor balance may put you at more risk for falling. But what people don't think about sometimes is how many of you in the room have had a joint replaced? Not that many. Good job. There's only a few. One of the things that people don't think about is when you have a joint replaced, you've lost some of that feedback from your joint to your brain on balance. If you don't retrain your balance, your balance will not get better. The other thing that I think we all kind of agree on is that the older we get, the, less, the worse our balance becomes, okay? It's just a natural sort of deterioration of the muscles and the system between your nerves and your muscles and your brain and all of that. But the good news of all that is all of that can be retrained and can improve. Again, they've done study after study after study, um, testing people, training people, there used to be a thought that at a certain age, it really wasn't going to make that much difference if you strengthened or if you, you know, practice your balance. You're, you're just not going to get that much better at a certain point. What they have proven over and over and over again is that's not true. <coughs> so it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter how bad your balance is at the moment. All of those things can improve. Okay? So those are things that you can change. Um, again, when you go to your doctor or if you speak to your pharmacist, have them check your list of medications, especially in the day and age that we are now with medical, the way the medicine is, everybody's a specialist, okay? So you go see this specialist for this and you go see that specialist for that and you go see that specialist for that. This person prescribes something, that person prescribes something and someone else prescribes something now. Um, sometimes what gets lost in the shuffle is how all those things interact and do you need to be taking all of them or are they some, some of those overlapping? Um, so one of the things you want to do is make sure that whatever you're taking is necessary and that you're not taking anything that's not necessary, okay? Especially be asking about your sedatives, your antidepressants, your muscle relaxers, your uh, pain medication, anything that's going to make you a little bit more drowsy a little bit less alert or dizzy. Sometimes your blood pressure medications, if they're not right or they're interacting with something else you're taking, you know, make sure you educate yourself on foods that you should avoid if you're taking certain medications. Um, blood thinners, a lot of us are on blood thinners. You know, there's certain foods you shouldn't eat if you're taking blood thinners. Um, so all those sort of things are things that you can change, okay? Uh, vision problems, that's another thing. I think this, I. Don't quote me on this, but I want to say the statistic is that at age 35, your eyes start to deteriorate, okay? So anybody under 35 here? <laughs> One person. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so it's just something that happens. So the, the reason I bring this up is um, don't put off getting your, your eyes checked every year. Make sure that you're getting the right prescription. The other thing that a lot of people don't think about is as you age, you need more light. You just need more light. It has to do with the way your eyes age, okay? Um, so if you've been living in your house for 50 years, you might need to change some things in your house now because what used to be enough light to you isn't anymore, 
okay? And it's just something, you know, if you have a stairway or a hallway or something like that, my poor mother, I use her as an example all the time, you know, the lighting in her house is terrible. I don't even know how she can see because I can't see now when I go into her house. So, but that's the way it's always been and that's the way it needs to be and you know what I mean? So we sneak in different lights all over the place. We're sticking puck lights up on the walls and you know, and <laughs> um, but you need to think about that. Think about your risk for falling. Anywhere there, where there's a step or a stair, you know, those neon strips are great to put on the edge of your steps. Put more lighting in your stairwell. Put railings on, all those sort of things. Sometimes you just have to, ch you know, as you're changing, your house has to change too. So a lot of people don't think about that. But you definitely need more lighting and you definitely need to keep up on your eyeglasses. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, I just went last year. Well, that was last year. So now you need to go this year, okay? And make sure that you're getting the right prescriptions. Um, foot pain and proper footwear, okay? A lot of people have pain in their feet. This is where I'm gonna please plead you to go to physical therapy, okay? I don't care, honestly, if you go to joint pro physical therapy, although now for the record, I do care. Um, <laughs> forgot we're being recorded. Um, but take care of your feet, because that's huge. It's huge, and sometimes it's a simple thing. Um, you know, I often, we have patients that come in all the time and they go to their doctor and they say, well, my feet kind of hurt or my hip kind of hurts or my knee kind of hurts. And the thing that grates on me the most is the doctor that turns to you and goes, well, you're not getting any younger. You know what I mean? Um, I just had a doctor say that to me and I was like, excuse me? Uh, <laughs> but that is my pet peeve. You, j it, you should not be walking around with any aches, pains or whatever if you haven't tried to fix it. Um, but the shoe wear is huge. You know, you can't maybe wear the same shoes that you've worn for the, you know, brands before. Um, we could go on and on and on about shoe brands and how some of them are terrible and some of them are better, and it totally depends on your foot. And your foot changes over time. So maybe the Nikes that you had when you were 50 aren't gonna support you the way you need when you're 60, you know? or whatever. So have somebody look at your feet, look at your shoes, you know, don't, don't be stumbling around because if your feet aren't making good contact with the floor because you have an ache or pain or a, a bunion or a hammer toe or whatever it is, um, that is gonna put you at higher risk for falling, okay? The other thing is my pet peeve is these darn house slippers. Anybody have those? The ones that you wear inside your house that you're shuffling along in, please. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> um, it's nice, you know, because it gives you a little more cushion, um, but it, it's such a tripping hazard, you know, when you have those slippers. You need something that's going to give your foot some support and have some traction. And while I'm thinking about throw all your, your throw rugs away, okay? They're super cute and whatever, but they trip more people than I can tell you. You know, and I, I grew up with them. Runners in the hallway, you know, throw rugs all over, my mom's 86 and she still walks and moves the rug as she goes. I'm like, stop, you know? Um, but I can't tell you how many people trip on those little rugs. So um, also watch your little pets because we have a lot of people who trip on their pets. So um, not, I'm not telling you to get rid of your pets. <laughs> I'm just telling you sometimes you have to move slower. When your pets are around you, you just have to stop you know, and move slower. Um, household hazards, that's kind of the throw rugs and things like that. All right, so that was a long talk for a one slide, sorry. Um, but those are the things that you can change. Those are the things that you can do, okay? So I want you to change the things you can. That's the first thing I want you to take away from this talk. The second thing I want you to take away from this talk, this is a very busy slide, but the important part about this is that when you're standing, your center of gravity needs to be over your base of support, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about center of gravity and base of support. And if you can get those two concepts, you're going to have way better balance, okay? As you, first of all, to, in order to have good balance, your center of gravity has to be in the middle of your base of support. So you're standing up straight, okay? Which is fantastic when you're 25, okay? As you age and as you do years of work in front of you, okay, we all sort of tend to hunch over a little bit. 
So what that does is it moves your center of gravity in front of your base of support, okay? So one of the things you can do is work on your posture, okay? Another thing that we do with you in therapy is work on your posture. But maybe you're that person who your spine is stuck that way and you're not gonna be able to stand up any straighter tomorrow, okay? Maybe over time you will, but maybe not right away. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you can't change your center of gravity, change your base of support, okay? Think about a walker. Everyone groans and hates walkers, but the reason they make you more steady is because they provide a larger base of support, okay? Think about when you're walking on an icy surface and you know, winter time is coming, as much as it's hard to believe, um, but when you're walking on an icy or wet surface, what do we all do, no matter what your age is or whatever? You slow down and you walk a little wider. You widen your base of support, okay? So what I want you to think about is if, if you're in a situation where you are tipping or losing your balance or feeling unsteady or you just sat up and you feel a little woozy, that's the other thing. I want you to sit for a minute on the edge of your bed before you go to stand up. Okay, but get your bearings first. But, but if you need to, widen your base of support, okay? The biggest thing that happens is that when people are gonna fall, say I'm gonna fall to my right, okay? What I want you to practice at home is start falling, to, start tilting to your right in front of a counter where you can catch yourself and then pick up your foot and move it, okay? If you can cue yourself to pick up your foot and move your foot, you're gonna prevent a lot of falls. Okay, say you're falling backward. Okay, say you're falling backward. What I want you to practice is pick up your foot. Okay, pick up your foot to extend your base of support. Because what's happening when you're falling backward, I'll do it this way, when you're falling backward, your center of gravity now is moving backward. So you need your base of support to get bigger backward. Okay, it's gonna be really hard to fall over if your foot is back here. But it's gonna be really hard for you to do that if you haven't practiced. Okay, if you're falling forward, practice moving your foot forward. Okay, the first thing, the first instinctual thing I want you to do is as you start to feel like you're losing your balance, the first thing we normally do is panic. Oh, I'm gonna lose my balance, oh, you know. I want you to first say, Michelle said, move my foot. Pick your foot up, okay. That's what that slide's about, okay. It's about making, first of all, bringing yourself upright so your center of gravity is over your natural base of support. But if you can't do that, or if you're you know, falling or whatever, losing your balance, make your base of support bigger. If you can't do it on your own, that's when we recommend you get a walker to do that for you, okay? But most of us can do that on our own. It's just you haven't, you haven't been trained to do it, all right? All right, so if you're, if you're feeling unsteady, these are the recommendations. Move towards something, this says a wall, but move towards something steady. Okay, I'm gonna challenge you to say your chair is not steady. People grab a chair, the chair tips over, okay? Grab a wall, grab a, I don't know, if you have a giant big kitchen table, the big oak tables or something, that might be okay. Um, but go towards something that's gonna give you a little bit of extra support. All right, next. Um, if you're going to fall, here's the other thing. Use your hands. Um, it's typically an instinct, but sometimes people are so afraid of breaking their wrist that we've had patients tell us that too. Well, you know, I hit my head because I was afraid of breaking my wrist. And I'm gonna tell you, you're way better off breaking your wrist than hitting your head, okay? Which is the next slide that's gonna tell you to protect your head, all right? Most important thing is if you, if you have gone past that point of no return and you can't you know, prevent yourself from hitting the ground, um, the first thing I want you to do is think about bracing your fall and then protect your head, okay? Again, um, most broken bones can be fixed. Um, your head is a little bit more challenging to fix, okay? Especially if you're taking blood thinners. Um, so really protect your head. Um, then when you're on the ground, the first thing I want you to do is just relax, okay? You're gonna be shaken, you're gonna be nervous, your heart rate's gonna be going up, and I want you to really take a breath. Take, you know, take 10 seconds. It's only gonna take you 10 seconds. Take a deep breath, relax, okay? Because the next thing you need to do is assess your situation. Oh, this one, um, they, if you're falling, they want you to curl up, 
just so that you don't have limbs you know, flying all over the place because that's more at risk for injury. Um, but the next one I think is, oh, well, okay, so you're gonna roll. This is how to get up, okay. So the, the taking a breath is what I want you to do is I want you to assess your situation. I thought there was a slide that, a slide that talked about this. So you need to take a minute to determine if you have any injuries, okay? You don't wanna just jump up from the ground, all right? Um, this is especially important if you're with someone who falls because as the person with them, your first instinct is gonna to be to help them get up, okay? I want you to say no, I'm not gonna help you get up. I'm gonna help you figure out if you have any injuries first, okay? So take a deep breath, relax, assess. Start moving your limbs one by one. Move a leg up, move another leg up, move your arm, move your head, your neck a little bit. If anything hurts, I don't want you to move, all right? Um, if you live alone, here's my next plug. If you live alone, please get one of those life alert things or never leave your house without your cell phone in your pocket. Um, I, I have so many patients and so many people I've talked to over the years who said, well, I was just going out to the garbage to throw something in the can or I was just going out to the garage to get a screwdriver or whatever, you know, you cannot leave your house if you don't have some way of alerting someone if you can't get back to the house, okay? Um, so anyway, um, how to get up from a fall, okay? So this is usually where I lay on the floor and demonstrate how to get up from a fall. There's lots of different ways to get up from falling. Um, I'll show you the traditional way to get up and then we can talk about other ways to get up because 90% of the people that we talk to about getting up from the floor there's other things they have going on. They've had a hip replaced, they've had a knee replaced, their knee doesn't bend that far, they're, you know, whatever it is. Um, so there's adaptations we can make. Um, while I'm thinking about it, if you go home and you practice some of these things and you feel like, the, you know, what you showed me today isn't gonna work for me, please call us. Just say that you heard this presentation at the Village Hall and you'd like to come in for a balance screening or a fall assessment or something. I have, like I said, been a therapist for over 30 years. I've never ever met someone that we couldn't figure out a way to get them off the floor, okay? There's gotta be a way for you to get off the floor. The biggest thing that keeps people from doing things, that keeps you from going out and being social and visiting with your friends and being as active as you wanna be is you're afraid to fall. And it's not you're afraid to fall, you're afraid if you fall, you're not gonna be able to get up or you're gonna be hurt. So let us help you with that. But here's how you fall, do you wanna demonstrate this? Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm gonna say? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you're on, the, you're on the ground. So you wanna sort of stretch out first, you wanna take that deep breath and you wanna relax. Then you wanna start assessing. So move your limbs around one at a time. Make sure that you don't have any pain. Feel your head, make sure that you're not bleeding, okay? Make sure that you don't have any reason you need to call 911, okay? Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna roll to, say you have a, a, you fell on one side and now that hip hurts a little bit, but you can still move it, but that hip hurts a little bit. All right, so you're gonna roll to the opposite side. Never roll, obviously, onto the injured side. So you're gonna roll, okay? Then you're gonna try and actually get up onto all fours, all right? So you're gonna go up on your hands and knees. This is where everyone always stops me and goes, I can't do that, okay? We'll figure out a way for you to do it, okay? But you're gonna get on your hands and knees, and then you're gonna try and find something sturdy that you can get to to help you whether it's a chair or a table or whatever it is. Then you're gonna put one leg in front. So you're gonna half kneel, and then you're gonna push up from that position, okay? That's, that's the perfect way to get up from a fall, okay? So you're gonna roll, you're gonna get on your hands and knees, you're gonna put one leg in front, and then you're gonna stand up from that position, okay? Um, if you're in your home, all right, and you're in the middle of a room and you don't have anything sturdy, one thing I can suggest is always look for a staircase if you have stairs in your home. That's the easiest thing to get up on, okay, is go to the stairs, crawl to the stairs. If you have to crawl all the way across the room, crawl to the stairs or scoot, either way, yeah, scoot, you can do that too, 
Okay. The biggest mistake I see people making is they don't lean forward enough. Okay. The key to getting up from this position, because most people can some most people can get into this position, but then they're stuck. Okay. So you got to lean forward enough, get your weight over the leg, then to stand is very little effort. Okay. If you're trying to stand from back here, it's super hard. I can't probably even do it. Okay. It's really hard. But if you actually lean yourself forward enough, again, that's the center of gravity over your base of support. Okay. Put your body over the leg that's going to move, and then it's very little effort at all to stand. But that's where your leg strengthening comes into case. Okay. But it doesn't take that much strength to get up if you're doing it properly. Now, say you, say you can't kneel, then you're going to scoot. So you're going to be on your butt. So you're going to assess. You're going to do all those things. <laughs> or have a seizure. Um, and then you're going to sit up. And if you have to roll to sit up, you can roll to sit up. But then you can scooch, OK? Then you're going to scooch. So you're just going to scoot back to whatever you can find. If you can't get on your knees or whatever, let me grab our step. This is where you want to find your stairs or a step of some kind. This is where your arm strength comes into play. So now she's backed herself up to the bottom step. OK, then you can scooch up onto that step. And you can sit and rest for a minute. Then you can scooch up to the next step. Then you can scooch up to the next step until you can stand. Or maybe it's scooch up to a step until you can get to the chair, you know, so until you can get to the chair or whatever. I've had patients in the past who don't have stairs at home. And what they do is they get a step. And they have that step in their living room or whatever, under a chair or whatever. It's always there. Because if they should fall, they can crawl over to that chair, pull that step out, get up, get up, and they're up. OK? There's always a way we can help you figure out how to get yourself off the floor. This is, of course, if you're not injured. OK? If you're injured, you're calling them. You're calling 911. All right. Um, all right. I think, I don't know if there's any other slides. I know this is a lot of information, but really the two things I want you to take away from this is change what you can change, get your, um, get your center of gravity over your base of support, move your feet if you need to, okay? And there's always a way that you'll be able to get up, okay? Now, obviously call 911 if there's any pain, or if you're with somebody who loses consciousness, or you lose consciousness, instantly call 911. I don't care if they've lost consciousness for five seconds and they wake up and say, I'm fine, don't call 911. Okay? Call 911. All right? Um, here's the other thing don't help someone if you already have issues with your own balance. Okay? Um, this happens all the time. We get, we get patients in for therapy. I ask them, how, how did you get injured? How did you hurt your back? How did you whatever? Well, my wife was falling, and I tried to help her. Wife fell. She did not get hurt, but husband was terribly hurt. OK? So don't help yourself. You've got to protect yourself, because then you can be there to call for extra help. OK? Then keep your wide base of support. Lower yourself to the floor. Find that piece of sturdy furniture and lift yourself from your hips. Make sure your body weight is over and then you don't have to work so hard. All right. So hopefully through a little bit of information that I was able to give you today, you're a little bit less fearful about falling, a little bit more confident about what to do if you should fall. Um, and then please start exercising. <laughs> and if you need more help, call us or go to the Matter of Balance classes or go to the Fit and Strong classes or call whatever physical therapy clinic you want. The, one of the things that I want to really um, make sure you understand is that in the state of Illinois, you do not need an order from your doctor to go seek physical therapy. Okay? Um, we just had a question right before we started and, and said, oh, I need to go to the doctor. And I said, no, you don't. You don't have to go to the doctor to get physical therapy. You just have to call the physical therapy clinic and set up an appointment. Okay? We will communicate with your doctor. They'll get the reports on everything that we found, our goals, our plan of care. They're, it's all in part of your medical record. But you no longer need to make that your first step. Okay? 
So if anybody has any questions about that, um, if anyone has Medicare as their primary insurance, um, you're paying for those physical therapy benefits every year. At the end, it restarts every calendar year. It's almost October now. If you haven't had physical therapy and you have some ache, pain, balance issue, whatever it is, you're leaving those benefits on the table because it all starts over again January 1st. So I encourage you to use the benefits that you have and, and you know, come and see if we can help you. Um, anything else you can think of? Thank you. All right. Triad works to improve the quality of life for seniors by providing an opportunity for the exchange of information between public safety, social services, and seniors. There are no membership papers to fill out or fees to pay. Everyone is welcome to attend. Each month, we present a guest speaker on subjects that keep you informed and up-to-date on the latest scams, frauds, and other criminal activities. We also discuss safety issues, home preparedness, and staying healthy. Triad meets the fourth Thursday of every month. Contact the Newlax Police Department at 815-462-6100 for more information.